It's uh, six o'clock in the morning and I've brought you up here to Old Winchester Hill because I thought it'd be great for us to witness together uh, the sunrise. We don't often see a sunrise. In fact, the last time that I saw a sunrise was when I picked someone up from Luton Airport back in February. But it's always good occasionally to get out and see a sunrise, to see the sun gradually eradicate the darkness of the night and allow the new day to begin. Hi, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the regional ministers for Southern Counties Baptist Association and I really appreciate and, th and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share with you on this occasion. We, we live in strange times and be assured of our prayers and all our support for you uh, during this COVID period. We've been praying for you uh, regularly as a team. And thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. It's a real privilege to be part of your worship today. I, I, whenever I see a sunrise, it reminds me of that great verse which says, because of your great love, we will not be consumed. For your compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You might be surprised to hear that actually that verse doesn't come from one of the Psalms. It sounds like it should do, but, but it actually doesn't. It actually comes from the Book of Lamentations. And the Book of Lamentations is a book that is filled with grief, with sorrow, with mourning, uh, with sadness. And yet right in the middle of this book, we discover this great verse of hope. I don't recall as a young Christian ever really being taught to, to weep or, or to lament or to mourn. In fact, actually, I don't really recall many sermons about mourning or weeping or many sermons on lamentations when I come to think about it. But actually, mourning and weeping is found to be quite biblical. We, we see Job mourning, obviously. And David writes uh, in his psalms, some of his psalms come from a position of sadness and grief, expressing a sense of mourning and weeping to God. And we know that Jesus also wept. Jesus wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus, but he also wept as he entered into Jerusalem. While others were gathering around him and praising God, he, he stood and looked at Jerusalem and began to weep over her. Lamentations is an unusual book because it's given over to this theme of weeping and mourning. In fact, in Lamentations it says this, Bitterly she weeps at night, tears are on her cheek, talking about Jerusalem, that's chapter 1 verse 2. Later on in chapter 1 verse 16 it says, This is why I weep and my eyes overflow with tears. Chapter 2 verse 11 says, My eyes foul from weeping, I am in torment within. My heart is poured out on the ground because my people are destroyed, because children and infants faint in the street of the city. Although scholars don't agree on the author of Lamentations, what they do agree is that this is a collection of five poems that took place following the exile. After the destruction of Jerusalem and, and the temple, these poems were put together and the people of Israel began a period of time in their calendar that was fixed where they would come back to that occasion to be reminded and to mourn and to weep and to lament uh, the destruction and removal of the temple initially but also when the Romans uh, removed the second temple. It was a time of lament and it was a time of mourning. And what about us? Well, maybe our practice of lamenting is not so much we put a date in, in the diary, 
but actually when things happen we actually take time to mourn and lament there have been over 300,000 cases of COVID in the UK and worldwide that figure increases to 20 million people in fact 46 1,500 people over that figure have died now in this country but worldwide worldwide it's 700,000 that could that should cause us to stop and to lament and to mourn to some extent but over and beyond COVID there are other things that are taking place in our world at this point in time we, many of us are aware of the devastating explosion in Lebanon, for example. But you may not be aware of the 1.3 million children in South Sudan that are suffering from acute mal malnutrition. Or the 13 million people in India that have been displaced recently by the flooding that followed the monsoons that have taken place. But then we could mention other countries as well, Malaysia, Indonesia, China, Hong Kong, the situation in Hong Kong and Zimbabwe, and, and the list goes on and on and on. There are circumstances and situations when I think it's right for us to, as Christians to stop and to lament, to, to weep over the things that are taking place in the world. The writer Lamentations puts it like this in chapter 2 verse 18 the hearts of the people cry out to the Lord the wars of daughter Zion let your tears flow like a river day and night give yourself no relief your eyes no rest as British people it's not our normal response to respond emotionally and yes we need to be careful about that because we can become very self-focused and be driven just by our feelings but I think it is appropriate from time to time to feel the circumstance to feel the situation and to feel the emotion of the occasion and from time to time to weep with those who weep The Book of Lamentations isn't just about weeping, it's also about repenting. The people of Israel had this period of lamenting but they also recognised that there was a period where they needed to return to God and come back to him and confess their sins to him. In chapter 2 it says this, chapter 2 verse 14, My sins have been bound into a yoke, by his hands they were woven together. They have been hung on my neck and the Lord has sapped my strength. And in verse 3, I like this, it says, Let us examine our ways and test them. Let us return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven and say, We have sinned and rebelled. God's people have not always got it right. I remember as a young pastor when I was in Harlow meeting with the other church leaders of the town and we had one of those conversations where people were bemoaning and lamenting to some extent of the lack of effectiveness of the church and as part of the conversation and as a new minister I contributed and I suggested that maybe we ought to corporately confess before God on behalf of the church and have a time of repentance my, my suggestion was at best met with a stony silence but at worst I received this stinging email from one of the leaders suggesting that I had been disrespectful of God's church and disrespectful of other church leaders. As I've reflected on that over the years I still think there are moments when we as church together but also as individuals need to come back to God and say God we got this wrong we didn't get it right and we need to confess and repent to you we might want to repent to God that uh, 
we haven't always treated our black and white brothers and sisters equally. We, we might want to come to God and say, God, we are sorry that we have prioritised convenience over, over justice in terms of our shopping habits. We may want to say to God, God, we repent because we have been passive and slow to react to those who are poor or are marginalised, who are in need. Or we might want to confess to God that sometimes our worship has been temporary and superficial and we have not allowed the Spirit of God to enter into our lives to change us and make our lives into a whole life of worship. And we can name other things as well. There's so much that we, we need to come to God and fall on our knees and say, God, forgive us. We return to you, we repent before you, and we ask you to change our lives so that we might be in better relationship with you for the future. Lamentations isn't just a book about weeping and repenting. It's also a book about renewing our hope in God. Right in the middle of this incredible book are these verses of great hope in God himself. Lamentations is an amazing book in the way that it's put together. It is these five poems that have been collated together. But each of these five poems has 22 verses or stanzas. And uh, the first four poems are acrostics. They follow the Hebrew alphabet in their structure. The fifth doesn't quite do the same thing. But the third poem, the one in the middle, is longer than the others. So where the others have 22 verses in our Bible, you'll see that the third poem has 66. Each stanza, each stanza of the poem is given three verses. And this is the middle poem. And in the middle of the poem, in verse 22, these amazing words of hope appear. Let me read them to you. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him and let him be filled with disgrace. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his faithfulness. What wonderful words. Recognising that in the midst of grief, in the midst of mourning, in the midst of lamenting, in the midst of repentance and confession, there is vast, massive hope. And why can we be so sure of this? Well, the writer says three things particularly. Because of God's great love for us. Reminded of that wonderful verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loves us. His great and massive love. Secondly, because his compassions never fail, or the old version, his mercies never fail. God is a God who is full of compassion and grace, who's always looking to love and care for his people and those that will turn to him and seek to follow him. He has compassion on all people and his compassions never fail, regardless of whatever we face, whether it be COVID, whether it be floods, whether it be starvation, whether it be death itself, 
God's compassion never fails. And his faithfulness is great. Great is your faithfulness. We've all experienced times when we've been let down. When people that we thought were faithful to us perhaps weren't able to maintain that faithfulness as we would have liked. But what we can be reassured of and what we can be certain of is that God's faithfulness never fails. God's love is great and his faithfulness is great and there is no greater faithfulness. So what's our response to this? Well, our our response, I think, is firstly to weep with those who weep, to mourn with those who mourn, to see the moment and to allow the emotion to affect us, to actually ask God to allow his emotion to overflow us, that we might enter into the weeping of God. Secondly, that we will be people of repentance. That repentance isn't just something we did in the past, it's something that is ongoing and continuous. And that we'll be people that come back time and time again to God saying, God, we need to return to you. We need to confess that we have not always been right before you. But thirdly, that we receive the hope of God, that we place our trust in him again that we lift up our heads, that we see the sun rise and recognise that there is a new morning. I love the fact that there is a cycle to the day. At the end of the day, as darkness comes over us, all that has gone past, we put to bed. And as we come before God in confession and we recognise that perhaps the day has not been perfect, we can look forward to the next day and as the sun rises so does God's grace as the sun rises so does his love and his compassion and his faithfulness and a new day begins and as we move forward into the future let us remind ourselves let's let's be mindful that God is a God who does the new thing who allows the new day to start that the sun might rise, that it might gradually dissipate the darkness and the light of God might enter into our lives. May you know his grace and goodness. May you know his faithfulness. May you know his love and his compassion and all his greatness in your lives. May you know those moments of weeping and those moments of confession, but may you also know that huge, vast hope that we find in our great and wonderful Lord. May God bless you as you continue to serve him and love him. Amen.